Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'da ayya al-habbati fi Allah qala al-hafiz ibn Rajib rahimahullah ta'ala he said the manners of advising and from this discussion is when it is said to a man in his face that which he hates to hear so if this is done with the intention of sincerely advising him then it is good some of the salaf would say to their brothers do not advise me until you tell me in my face what I hate to hear so when an individual informs his brother about a defect found in him in order that he may avoid it, it is good for the one being informed about one of his defects to make an excuse for it, if an excuse for it exists. But if this advising is done with the intention of only blaming him due to a sin he committed, then it is reprehensible and condemned. It was said to one of the Salaf, would you love that someone inform you about your faults? So he replied, if he does so with the intention of blaming me, then no. Rahimahumullah, Jami'an ala salafana as-salih. Ahabatifillah, here Ibn Rajim, in this portion of the treatise, is pointing out to a very important fact that from the manners of advising is that you want the truth, and you are doing so with sincerely with sincerity and advising your brother in his faults to his face with the intention of helping him to correct himself but if the intention against this all goes to a class if the intention is to belittle him to defame him to publicize his or her faults or to blame them then this is not praiseworthy. This is what the Salaf rejected. And this is what we're missing tremendously from many of our brothers and sisters when they are criticizing others. In fact, many of them should not even be involved in this because they don't have the knowledge to do so. They haven't studied with the ulama. They haven't uh, excelled in these particular uh, issues. But if they are grounded, they're grounded in these issues of Aqidah and, and Minhaj methodology and Dawa and the Maslaha and Mafsada, the harms and the benefits of these things and their Ahlan for this, meaning that they rightfully deserve to be speaking about these issues, they have the knowledge, they have the wisdom, then they, sh they still must adhere to justice. But many of us do not have any of those characteristics and we rush and jump to speak about issues of of criticizing other individuals other muslims and this is a tremendous mistake as kathrata imma have spoken about in the past and from our ulama of this time and i've mentioned it in many of our durus uh, a beautiful statement of sheikh salim bin fazan and he said the the beginning student of knowledge and he said the people from the awam should not be involved at all in issues of takfir with tabdir with tafsiq, they should not be involved with declaring people to be innovators, declaring to people to be disbelievers, and or to be declaring people to be wicked sinners. This is what Imam Fozan has said. But do the people who listen, who even claim to follow that great Imam or to respect that great Imam, they don't listen. They don't practice that. Because many of them have not, they only study translations. They haven't sat with any one of the ulama and sat and, 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 and steep themselves like a cup of tea, like a tea bag in a, in a, or tea leaves in a fresh, hot, boiling cup of water. They haven't steeped in there, immersed themselves in ilm and immersed themselves with those ulama and gaining their manners and their asloob and their minhaj and dawah and their saluk before speaking about these issues, but rather they rush to speak. And so this is why it's important ikhlas, and countless adilla from Kitab wa Sunnah to illustrate that. Then the Imam said, so blaming and condemning someone for a sin he committed is detested. The Prophet Wasallam forbade that a fornicating woman be condemned, even though he commanded that she be lashed with a whip. So she was whipped according to the legal limits, the hadood, but she was not condemned for her sin, nor was she blamed for it. So she wasn't attacked, her honor wasn't attacked anymore so than it already was from her actions. It is reported in Tirmidhi and other collections in Marfur 
uh, form, meaning it went to the Prophet Wasallam. Whosoever condemns his brother for a sin he committed will not die until he has committed it himself. Be careful, Ahabatifillah. If nothing else that we gain from studying this, for whoever listens to this, if one person listens and benefits in their actions, that do not rush to speak about individuals. And it is not an obligation upon you. If you are from beginning students of knowledge or you're from the general Muslims, which I would assume anyone who's listening to me is falling into one of those two categories, that you even involve yourself in those issues. Please, don't even waste your time. Don't even, even if it's somebody who is a Hizbi, don't waste your time in those issues. Yes, those issues are important, but someone else who's mustahik in speaking about these issues, who has the right because they have knowledge and they have fiqh and they know these issues, they should speak about it. Don't involve yourself. And then you can save yourself from a lot of sin. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Min husnul uh, husnu khulqul muslim tarakhu ma la ya'nihi. Okay, ma qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi he said from the best uh, characteristics of the Muslim or a way to pre 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 uh, preserve his religion is leaving those things which don't concern him. It doesn't concern you what Sheikh so-and-so made a mistake in such and such issue. You don't even know Arabic and you can't even get to the Sheikh. Or it doesn't concern you what a Talib al-Ilm in such and such a locality made a mistake in this issue and, and, and such and such, but and you're going to spread that. You're going to spread it in 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 in, in Make al wala wal bara on this this issue or this this akhta this mistake. That's not for you. Leave it. Yes, be warned against those people of innovation and stay away from them. But don't involve yourself in excessive speech about it, especially if you don't have the knowledge to do so. Then he said the hadith is referring to a sin of which the person who committed it has repented from. Al Fudail rahimullah taala said the believer conceals the sin of his brother and advises him. While the evildoer disgraces and condemns him. May Allah protect us from this. This is what Al Fudayl has mentioned as being from the signs of advising and condemning. And it is that advising is linked to secrecy, while condemning is linked to publicizing. SubhanAllah. That's a big fuaid, a big faida that uh, you know we just came across. Again, Fudayl has mentioned as being from the signs of advising and condemning. What he has mentioned is from this. And he said, it, and it is that advising is linked to secrecy. This is the speech of uh, Imam Ibn Rajab. He said that uh, advising is linked to secrecy, that you should strive to be secret in your advising your brother and sister, not quickly going to the minbar, quickly making a YouTube video, quickly, 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 hastily do, striving to belittle them. While condemning is linked to publicizing. So there's a relationship between condemning someone, and that's usually something that is publicized. It, it used to be said, whoever commands his brother towards doing good at the head of a gathering, then he has condemned him. Or it is something with this meaning. This is another statement of Ibn Rajab, and it's giving us uh, insight into how the Salaf were. The Salaf used to hate that commanding good and forbidding evil be done in this manner. Instead, they love that it be done privately between the one commanding and the one being commanded, for indeed, this is from the signs of sincere advice. This is since it is not the goal of the one who is advising to spread and publicize the faults of the person he is advising. Rather, his goal is only to put an end to the evil that he has fallen to, fallen into. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from falling into these uh, sinful characteristics and bless us. With Alman Nafi Raskun Taimu Amal Mutakabilan was Salah Wasalam Ala Nabi and Muhammad.